Welcome everyone to a brand new, another ep exciting episode of Power Rangers in Cyberspace. My name is Sean Fritz. I am joined as always with this guy. Christian Ingram, aka the Power Rangers guy, not that Power Rangers guy. Such a dick. Uh, today we have a very exciting special guest. Uh, we're joined with uh, Keith Gibbs from Fayetteville Comic Con. Say hi, Keith. Hi, Keith. <laughs> oh, I mean, hi, Christian. Hey, Sean. How's everybody doing here today? <laughs> Oh, we're great. Um, we're, we're, we're yeah, we're very excited because uh, we ran into Keith initially in Richmond because we're globe trotters, East Coast globe trotters. Um, yeah, at uh, at GalaxyCon in May, and then again in um, GalaxyCon Raleigh here, and July, uh, July, and wherever the hell else we ran into him. That was going um, but, to places. Uh, yes, but then. Uh, uh, and just in talking to, to Keith, they presented us with an opportunity to um, get a little bit more in depth, a little bit more entrenched into the local convention scene here in Fayetteville um, and um, at the Comic-Con, which, Christian, that's where we met, buddy. That will be our one-year friend anniversary. If you use that word ever again, I will, <laughs> I will, I will friend break up with you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But uh, yeah, that's where I met Chris uh, and fell in love with his assholishness um, and you and you're okay. But um, that's not why we're here today. Um, so, uh, but we're here to talk about Fayetteville, the Comic-Con. It's coming up in a couple weeks. So Keith, give us the, the real brief rundown. What is it? When is it? Where is it? Et cetera. So, no problem. So Fayetteville Comic-Con is uh, celebrating our fifth year. So it's kind of a big year for us starting uh five years ago with kind of a one day idea that Fayetteville deserved to have a con of its own. Mm -hmm. Uh Fayetteville's located, I mean, extremely close to, to Raleigh, you know, forty five minutes to an hour and fifteen minutes to get to the Crown Expo Center where our con is held. Eat of awesomeness, 140 vendors, 80 artists, 23 to 30 uh invited guests, 32 panels and a couple different panel spaces. Um but what we want it to be is a, is a true fan-run, family-friendly, affordable convention. So we, uh, you know, purposely try to keep our costs low, so our ticket prices are low, so that we can have, uh, you know, get have a uh, convention, more of a convocation or a, you know a congress, whatever con term uh, you want to use, but actually have more fans and. And, and geeks of all types to gather, whether it's comics or movies or horror or different franchises like Dragon Ball Z or Power Rangers or Walking Dead. Uh, we say that if it's geek, we've got it. Yeah, and uh, I would say that that's, that's – I mean there's a, a, just a, some notable folks. Um, did, you, did you say it's two days? Uh, two-day two day convention, Friday, I'm sorry, Saturday and Sunday, October 19th and 20th. Uh, our day night is for load-in for vendors, but we are partnering with a local nonprofit that is doing a uh, meet and greet for their uh, fall beard contest to benefit the Karen Chandler Trust. There will be some Friday night pregame activity at, I believe it's called Patty's Pub in downtown Fayetteville. Patty's pub, uh, like Patty's Irish pub from a Patty's Irish pub, I believe P A D D Y. I'll have the exact information posted soon on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Um, and then we'll also be joining them Saturday night for one of our three potential, uh, after parties for our Saturday con. We have one that will be with, our invited guest, Jack Stouffer of uh, Lieutenant Bojoy, Battlestar Galactica fame. Mm -hmm. He is going to be doing a live cabaret performance. He has uh, many years of stage and screen, and, and he's going to do some uh, you know show tunes and anecdotes from his life at our uh, Con Hotel, the Holiday Inn, West Fort Bragg area from 9 to 11 Saturday night. The local Post 670 VFW is also going to be hosting a uh, an after party for us. That will be an all ages after party, so that you can, uh, if you're younger than 21, um, or if you are 21 with ID, they can serve you at the bar. But that's going to have some celebrity pictionary and some uh, karaoke, 
and then we'll be again partnering up with this uh, the beard guys for the uh, their beard and cosplay contest on Saturday night, which will be at Dirtbag Ales in uh, Fayetteville. There, right off ninety five, I think it's called Bag Ales. But again, all that information will be available on our website soon. So this is our first year of uh, last year. We had a small sort of after party at Husk Hardware, but but this year uh, we're kind of taking it to the fifth anniversary celebratory. I can get behind at least some of the names of those places. Dirtbag Ales. It's uh, sounds like a nice hole in the wall. Um, as it, far as the beer, it is. But there will be a big, you know, you know it's a, it's a pretty big fundraising deal for the Karen Chandler Trust. So um, it's going to be a hole in the wall, but it's going to be packed to the walls. I'm okay with that. Um, as far as the beard contest goes, I think I lost. Because this is about two days of growth right here, and as you I can just tell, shaved, it's... so I'm kind of screwed. Keith, you might you might got something going on there. I, I, I do, I do, but mine is mine is actually for St. Baldrick's. I go beard out starting you know towards the end of the summer every year. Uh, uh, just sperm shave, and but this is on four weeks for me. So Jesus, oh. yeah, I know it's incredible. I wish I could grow a beard like that. It takes like a month and a half for mine to grow in, but yeah, me too. Sean, you can't grow facial hair to save your life. I don't. I have to shave after because it looks like I'm a. Uh, I'll tell you when we're not recording. <laughs> well, all right then. All right. So, um, so uh, as far as the the convention goes, uh, you mentioned keeping costs down, but keeping the, uh for operations, but then keeping uh ticket prices down, um. Uh, and, and, and I know the answer to this, but I'm asking for the people that are watching and listening. Um, does that mean that you've gotten C, D, and E and F list uh, actors and, and, and creators and such? Or um, is that where a bulk of the budget goes to getting uh, relevant, uh, popular, famous people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I think a lot of our, our budget do- goes to getting relevant people, but we also want our, our uh, guests – invited guests to be approachable mm-hmm. we're, we're never going to have a you know william shatner william, william shatner or you know jay douglas or, or anybody because they cost too much to bring in mm-hmm. and we would have to pass that cost along to our guests and for any small con it's just unaffordable but mm-hmm. this year we have uh we're bringing uh a Harry Potter guest, Josh Herdman, who played Gregory Goyle in all eight of the Harry Potter movies. We've, there's never been a Harry Potter guest who's been in all eight films at a convention in the Carolinas. So mm-hmm. that's for us is a, is a pretty big deal and is approachable for our fans to be able to afford, you know, uh, headshots and autographs that aren't in those other con price ranges. Mm hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, we had Lou Fregno, we had uh, Sam Jones, Tony Todd, some some pretty big names. And this year we have again some very relevant and, and, and great comic book creators, um, and as you guys know, some great Dragon Ball Z and, and Power Rangers guests. Mm-hmm. I would dare yeah. say that this year's lineup is even better than last year's. And I was at last year's event, and I'm like, oh, this is a really good amount of people. And mm-hmm. this year it just seems like the guests are growing and growing every year. Uh, exactly, and and that's part of a, a fan run con and a local fan supported con is we can we're able to increase that uh, you know uh, guest attendance every year as long as we're you know doing well. This is not our you know business. <laughs> Neither Mike or I are are professional con promoters. We're fans that wanted to put on a great con for a great city. Um, especially a city that is uh, extremely relevant to our uh, military and, and fighting forces with Fort Bragg. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to circle back a little bit. Um, uh, so there's um, the tagline, if we speak, we got it. But there's also the other tagline, the world's most interactive convention. What What is it that you guys are, are expressing by that? Uh, absolutely. So one of the things, as you know, and I, I will never – you know, criticize anybody else's convention model, but a lot of shows are you get through the gate, you go stand in lines to meet celebrities and guests, and you're not really interacting 
face-to-face with anybody outside of your people that you come to the show with. So we pride ourselves in providing constant uh, main stage entertainment. We have sword fighters. We have uh, ninjas. We have aerialists. We have a Game of Thrones tribute rock band. We do trivia Mm. and door prizes from the main stage. We're doing uh, sketch-off contests with some of our invited guests. We're doing uh, quizzes on the show floor, such as, you know, name that, you know, who's that Pokemon? Who's that Lego character? Who's that Star Wars character? Uh, Plus, our panels are designed to be extremely interactive and and Mm -hmm. Q&A, and we want everybody to come not just uh, for our cosplay contest or our lip sync cosplay contest, which is an absolute uh, you gotta see it's, it's nothing's better than seeing Bohemian Rhapsody done by Darth Vader. Uh, <laughs> cause I mean, everything, everything is better in, in cosplay. Uh, but we're, we're an interactive con. We want people to come, be able to spend the day, uh, not blow their budget, but mm-hmm. be entertained. And when you, when you break it all down against ticket costs, it's, you know, less than $2 an hour of entertainment. Yeah. And, and I mean, quite honestly, uh, you know, uh, so is what I mentioned at the top. We'll, we we were invited to be part of this as well, so we'll be there. Uh, I mean, how much more interactive can you get? Well, watching you seeing your favorite YouTube Power Rangers fellow and uh, his friend that likes to curse a lot. Yeah, uh, and if you want to talk to somebody, Sean can talk forever. Oh, I certainly can. Uh, I know a lot about the stupidest things, but. Uh, we will be right in that that area, uh, as Keith said. Uh, we'll be in that approachable area, uh, right near Tracy Lynn Cruz and Michael Copon from Power Rangers, right near Arn Anderson, Sergeant Slaughter. You mentioned the troops, uh, Larry Hama, who's also a, a vet, uh, for, who wrote the book, quite literally, uh, on GI Joe. Uh, I believe he also was involved in Transformers, uh, Wolverine, Wolverine, uh, Sabretooth, the Nam. Mm-hmm. He, uh, other characters. He. Uh, he- one of my favorite young Avengers characters, uh, who is also a new warrior, Rage, mm. is a Larry Hama uh, I- invitation. So uh, Bucky O'Hare, the comic book, mm-hmm. uh, is is a Larry Hama, and and so that that's a big deal. And then the you know the even though Hama still works on GI Joe, another great artist uh, and writer, Brian Shearer, is mm-hmm. is going to be right there. I have a, uh, a cosplayer from Red Dowell Cosplay coming as the Benes, and she'll be right there with you guys for uh, both days, uh, you know, to do photos with, with fans and stuff. And, and, you know, we want people to come and have an opportunity to say something, draw something, you know, win something. You know, that's to me what a, a spectacle of a, of a Comic-Con should be. I, I'm, I'm not one to just walk around up and down aisles, you know, like, meeting people and seeing things. So this will do that for them. And, and that's what I said to Christian last year. I said, I could bang out Fayetteville in a, in a day last year, but there's, you know, I could just window shop. I could go talk to everybody that I wanted to talk to, but there were people there that I actually wanted to talk to. There were, uh, you know, celebrities uh, that again were approachable. There were vendors, there were uh, creators, um, you know, um, getting um, commissions done, things of that nature. Um, I think there's some local artists as well that aren't on the website uh, that might have a table. I, I, I think Rob. There are. There are. We're, yeah. we're heavily we're heavily featuring some local North Carolina artists. We have uh, two artists in residence, KJ Floyd and Jeff Davidson, mm-hmm. uh, who are both Fayetteville, uh, you know, re- uh, as well as Wooly McNair and Eric Klaus, who does uh, Ninjas and Robots. Um, very well known in the in the Fayetteville area, and we want to tell their story. Uh, you know, Wooly McNair, for example, just did a campaign with Nike, and uh, knowing that Converse used to have a huge factory in Lumberton, and me being a you know a Chuck Taylor Converse guy, and sneaker art has always really intrigued me to have a tie into comic art, and Wooly's going to be there and talk about that. Uh, so we are we are definitely uh, very focused on promoting our local artists, our local podcasters our local vendors. Um, there's currently on our Instagram page, a draw uh, this example, superhero that we've come up with in your style, uh, to win some tickets. And we're getting some really cool art, both from professional artists and 
uh, you know, high school, middle school kids who are taking a stab at drawing that. So we're, we're again, extremely uh, promotional of local talent. I do like that character, the, the character design. It's very, yeah, it's very nice. It's reminiscent of something, uh, but it's, it's, you, it's its own unique thing. And we have a take on that, uh, which I really enjoyed it. We'll have as a sticker this year, which is sort of looks a little Powerpuff Girl inspired. Mm-hmm. But we have uh, an artist, Troy Little, coming from uh, Prince Edward Island, Canada, who drew for the mm-hmm. Powerpuff Girls. Um, I originally discovered him when he did the graphic novel adaptation of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. But now he's working with Kevin Eastman, the creator of the Ninja Turtles, the Turtles on drawing yes. blood and radically arranged Ronin ragdolls. And he's the artist for Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons, which just went into its second run. So, you know, pretty hot, young comic book creator that not a whole lot of people know about. And um, speaking of that, two degrees of separation, uh, Troy Little did a, does a Rick and Morty's book. Uh, in Wilmington, there's a, a, a writer, uh, Teeny Howard, who wrote on a couple of the Rick and Morty books and who also wrote tie it back to this again who wrote uh who wrote the the remainder of the story of mighty Morphin power rangers pink uh this four five and six uh based on the original storyline she put the words in the bubbles basically hmm. um, and i met teeny at one of our you know partner shops here in in uh raleigh uh, fight or flight comics uh, mm-hmm. at a signing uh, last year um, and hopefully she'll be a guest of ours in the future when she's available. I think we approached her for this uh, fall, but she just had another commitment. And she's her star is definitely rising, and she's the coolest chick, uh, lady. Uh, let me rephrase. And um, and um, you know she's every time I see her, she's like, oh hey, how's it going? Because we I had uh, she gave me ten minutes one uh, at uh, another convention locally, and she's just the most fun person to talk to. She's like, Oh, I love it. It's great. I just did this, did that. And all of a sudden I'm writing an annual for captain America. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, good for her. Good for her. Um, so, um, of all the, of all the guests that are, that are going to be there, uh, Keith, who, who's your favorite to, to meet, to see, to interact with. Uh, and additionally, who was the biggest get that you were excited to, uh, who was the biggest celebrity or, or, or person that you were excited to have come to uh, Fayetteville? Well, as I mentioned, one of the one of the biggest gets is is Josh Herdman, and, and uh, you know nobody in the Carolinas has really cracked. But he was actually he actually approached us because mm-hmm. he's friends with Gregory French, who is a you know four time attendee of Fayetteville Comic Con, who's a uh, Walking Dead Walker, okay. um, and. And they hit it off at some other con and Greg said, Hey, you should come to Fayetteville. So, you know, we didn't even approach Josh. Uh, initially he contacted us and said, Hey, I, I hear great things. And, and you know, I like, yeah, I love the American fans. I like the idea that it's in a, in a army military town and, and I'd like to come. So that, that, those are the type of things that, that are fun. Uh, I've met uh, Larry Hama several times. He's a huge part of my you know, nine, 10, 11, 12 year old self, uh, between GI Joe and star Wars, uh, action figures. That was my, you know, geek childhood, uh, which leads me to who I think is my absolute favorite and an opportunity that not many people have had is Colin Campwell. Colin Campwell is an 87 year old gentleman who was the original Mm -hmm. concept designer for everything big that you ever remember from star Wars, a new hope, in 77 uh you know it was he invented the death star the imperial uh star destroyer the uh jawas sand crawler all that original concept art was collins it was it was obviously changed and 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 modeled up a little bit different uh for some of the movies but he was offered the head of the modeling department design department of industrial light and magic by lucas and said that you know he had already done that and so now he wanted to go do something else so he sort of disappeared for a while popped up when he invented the IMAX movie theater technology uh, <laughs> popped up again a couple things and the computer engineer and he had a new uh, girlfriend they were living together they had to change a part she helped him get some stuff out of storage and move it and saw all these great models and, and drawings and sketches and inks and she didn't know that he had ever been involved in Star Wars to begin with. So it's only been a couple of years that he's been out on the uh, 
on the convention circuit, and this will be his first time he's ever appeared in the Carolinas, and uh, you know who knows when he'll have a chance to get back. So uh, between GI Joe and Star Wars, like I said, that was my my childhood. So Saturday we're featuring the GI Joe as kind of a keynote uh, presentation with Sergeant Slaughter, Brian Shear, uh, Larry Hama, and then we'll have uh, Colin Campbell as kind of a keynote on Sunday. Uh, talking about his influence on on the Star Wars universe, and obviously then on all of you know geek fandom. Yeah, because Star you know, Wars is hot right now, especially with um, the rise of Skywalker is. streaming service coming mm-hmm. out and the Mandalorian premiering here soon. So I think he's going to have a big influence on the convention. A- a- ab- absolutely, and so we also have uh, large attendance from the five hundred first and the Rebel Legion, uh, you know, professional. Uh, you know, so, right, so that will be sort of the corner opposite you guys. So there's going to be a lot of good interaction happening over there as well. And, you know, just the a lot of cons I go to, you meet an actor uh, who may not know anything about that universe. Mm-hmm. But uh, but this is a man who's whose uh, influence is obviously there. And just in the in the lines of the TIE fighter, or, you know, I have the you know, uh, uh, an X-Wing fighter hanging in, in the room next door, you know, something that's, that's just had a major. So, um, do you know if, if, uh, speaking to, uh, to Colin Cantwell, do you know if he'll have any of his original sketchbooks or, or any of his original portfolio with him? Absolutely. I, oh. I, I know we've asked, uh, Eddie travels with that. I just oh, saw nice. some of the, uh, uh, force con or, or no city for a a huge South of the border uh, convention. And you could see on his table, a lot of that original, uh, original art. And he also has videos that were played during his panel that show a lot of that. Nice. And he only, he only shows those live at cons. He doesn't make those available on YouTube, Mm. right? A little bit of an exclusive. Nice. Uh, so speaking of the panels, and I'm sorry, Christian, I don't mean to dominate everything. You're good. Do you have anything to add? Um, no, I just think it's exciting for at least him to see his original sketches that you won't be able to see anywhere else. So if you're going to mm-hmm. be in the area or you want to check them out, please go to this convention. Yes. I, I, it's a must for any Star Wars fan, I think, mm-hmm. just to see you know, where the words turned into uh, an idea, a visible idea. For everyone to see and then for everyone to consume through the, the great motion pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So um, uh, as far as panels, Keith, in the event that there are two panels booked and you can't go to one but you want to see it, um, there's not going to be a repeat panel from Saturday to Sunday. Uh, but will there be a panel or some or all of them available for later viewing? So not everyone, obviously, as I said, we have, you know, 32 some odd overall panels, but a lot of our key panels are going to be uh, recorded uh, video and audio made available now on our new, uh, you know, after the con set up YouTube channel. Uh, We are experimenting a little bit with potentially live streaming something, but we're limited by the technology that the crown provides and, mm-hmm. and the budget obviously that that we have to to bring in any anything else but we are going to be uh with your guys help with the help of a couple of uh, guests and and some uh, myself and jerry clan and for the major uh ones we will be uh recording uh dan johnson who writes for retro fan magazine uh is also going to be doing a couple interviews uh, and then he'll turn those into print. So there will be some follow-up print from some of these, uh, guest interviews. And, and at the very least, we'll make sure that the GI Joe panel, the power Rangers panel, the dragon ball Z panel, the star Wars panel all have a, a after con availability. Wonderful. Um, we'll be doing periodic live streaming. Uh, we have our own internet mm-hmm. connection that we can bring in, uh for that um so christian and I, I will be live streaming uh as we parade around um and say hi to people that have no idea who we are and um <laughs> that's fair yeah. it's called self-deprecation that's how, that's how people fair. like you more um just so you know christian i know keith knows um 
And uh, so we'll be doing some live streaming. We'll probably do some live streaming just before we do, because uh, we have at least one or two panels. Um, uh, we have one with uh, Michael Copan and Tracy Lynn Cruz. Uh, there's another one that we're kind of going back and forth on. You know, uh, there's there's a panel that I'll be doing. Uh, uh, stay tuned to our social media for that, for the official announcement. But Christian will be with uh, Tracy Lynn Cruz and Michael Copan. Uh, and you'll be... Uh, in some way, shape, or form, involved with a uh, anime, Dragon Ball Z, uh, to some degree. Yeah, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And and you know, there will also be the opportunity for pop up, you know, panels there at your all's you know booth. Anybody exactly. that wants to exactly. pass by, or you can pull over. You know, feel mm-hmm. free to you know talk. We could do some of the uh, Power Rangers trivia against Michael or Tracy. I have the buzzers that I'm going to bring for you guys to, right. to play around with. So you know. Like I said, there'll be a lot of great uh, uh, content. It's obviously better to come participate live, but uh, we want to make sure that that we you know, are, are very good about about sharing all the great one of a time things that are that are happening. Yeah, and I know um, uh, Copon at least is going to want to talk about his new donut shop that opened up down in Virginia Beach. I will actually be visiting there tomorrow, so that's something to look forward to to talk about at Fayetteville. Okay, so that's one of our open things that Christian you can help with is he mentioned to us, he goes, hey, I got this donut business. Can I bring donuts? And I have never once in my life denied anybody from bringing donuts. (laughs) And and, and I don't know if it's, you know, 3,000 donuts or 30 donuts or or whatever. Uh, Give me, get a little bit, you know, undercover boss sort of look at what's happening up there. And if they got anything with maple and bacon on it, Make sure, make sure I learn about that. I got you. And if he's there tomorrow, maybe I can record a video and we can post it on Fayetteville's Facebook page or something. You know, maybe do something that, with him. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. As you see, we've, we've had a couple other of our guests do some really cool uh, you know, Facebook promos. Uh, John Anderson, who, who you may or may not know out of Alabama. John is like he likes to call himself walking meat. You know, he's, he's just, you know, been an extra in everything, including one of the Ravagers in Gardens of the Galaxy 2. He's uh, just a, a really cool guy, uh, and he's going to be there helping uh, run some panels as well. Um, but he'll be located over with you guys as well. I forgot to mention him because he'll be with Sarge and Larry and, and Brian. So you'll be able to get a little bit of a back lot view of a lot of, you know, major movie productions hey man the more the merrier i mean and if you're looking to break into any of that kind of stuff i mean i think uh we're not far from the tyler perry let's make a movie compound in uh, in georgia somewhere but also more locally if i'm not mistaken there's a bunch of movie studios popping up or 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 whatever so there are plenty of um, people to ask questions on what to avoid, what to look for, what to do, how to act. Not like us, but you know. <laughs> well, um, and on and on that topic, we have a, a great. Uh, you know, he's active duty military. Uh, he is the director of a movie called "It Came from the Ether," which a couple years ago was a was a re- really you know kind of award winning film festival, uh, and he's going to be helping us run a little scenario with TJ storm and our other motion capture motion capture actors from Godzilla King of the monsters. TJ was uh, Godzilla. The other three were the three heads of King Ghidorah and they're going to be doing some demonstration on stage about how they mock that up. See, that's just going to be something that's really interesting to take a look at because if you want to like break into that, you know, just you, that's something you need to see. Well, and, and all this stuff, like the mocap specifically, like the Godzilla, the the fantasy stuff, it is, I mean, to a point, it's like anime come to life. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll agree so, with that. So there's cartoon anime, and then there's real life movie magic anime. So it's a little something for everyone. Um, I, I'm very excited for it. Uh, I mean, uh, speaking to your, your point, Christian, about uh, the donuts, um Maybe Mike and, and Keith, maybe Michael bring 3,000. And instead of waiting in line for 30 minutes, if you show up at 930, get there before that, though. And uh, take a step back here. Uh, when I go to a convention, I like to get there early. Um, I know that I will have to wait in line longer outside, but I'll be first in line or close to that. But I'll also have a communal experience with the people outside. So 
uh, you know, talk to people who you're excited to see. Uh, we're probably going to try to be out there. Um, maybe Mike will bring his 3000 donuts. Um, Keith's idea, not mine, uh, <laughs> to, uh, uh, to keep everybody, um, I guess, well fed until that 30 minute sugar rush wears off. Um, but, uh, Christian, I didn't tell you this yet, but, uh, I, I did buy a megaphone for the, uh, begin for the convention. You louder, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, if Sarge is going to be near us, oh. absolutely. Yeah, you want to have absolutely. Him. He's probably more comfortable behind it than I am. That's fair. That's and all. although this, and although this year we we don't have a a Pokemon guest, we've had uh, Veronica Taylor, who's the voice of Ash Ketchum, uh, both in year two and year four, and she plans to come back next year. Uh, there is a Poke Stop and a gym right outside the front door. So while you're waiting. Yeah, because we know if you're at a convention, you play Pokemon Go. Absolutely, I do. I, I do. Sean doesn't. He doesn't know what Pokemon I is. I I know what Pokemon Go is because uh, they made Ingress fun. <laughs> and if you know what Ingress is, please come talk to me because I actually know what that is. Absolutely. No idea. It was Pokemon Go, but with triangles. Super not as exciting. But establish the basis for not only Pokemon Go, but also the new Harry Potter Wizards Unite. And Google Maps before that. <laughs> Google Maps is the best. True that. Double true. Double true. Talking about donuts. <laughs> six no twelve. Wait, was it? Yeah. Two no six. Six no twelve. Twelve no baker's dozen. Six those, no ten those no cupcakes. twelve baker's dozen. Yeah. I told you that I'm crazy about those cups. Cupcakes, cupcakes cousin. cousin. Yeah, Chronicles of Narnia, one of the best nerd raps I've ever seen in my life. Probably the best uh, Saturday Night Live, whatever they called them. The not live. Let's digital shorts. Yes, that's it. Um, Not to be outdone by the ambiguously gay duo, Ace and Gary. Mm Mm-hmm. I did see. uh, Side note, but it is a convention-related side note, so it's I'll I'll allow it. I'm the host. Um, I was at New York the last year I went. It was 2015, maybe. And there was a pair, there were two guys that cosplayed as the ambiguously gay duo. That's awesome. the end of my story, yeah. Oh, no, it's awesome. And I know uh, New York Comic Con starts this week, right? Uh, it does. Uh, yeah, week, this weekend, the, yeah. Is it this weekend or next weekend? Because no, no, it's no, usually it's, the, it's this weekend. It's Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah, right? It is this weekend, yeah. It's usually the first weekend in, in Rocktober. Rocketober? Rocktober. Because yeah, it rolls off the tongue. I know IDW Publishing is going to have uh, uh, Lido, who did the writing for the uh, Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons, um, and they got some con exclusives. And I have a couple friends of mine hunting them down. I, I typically go, but now that I'm so involved in Fayetteville Comic Con, this is our this is our go time. I can't justify the the hotel price being. Thirty-five hundred percent higher than a weekend pass, which you can't even buy weekend passes anymore. So that's when I checked out. Right. So I used to actually work panels and screenings uh, mm. for Read Pop, which was Read Expo, mm-hmm. uh, for that show and and another show, and and just had some great experiences. But you're right. If if I wasn't working and getting compensated for my time, it's 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 definitely a hard chunk of change to to bite. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Plus, you either fly and it's a three, four hundred, or you drive and you pay parking, which is three, four hundred. Three, four hundred. Yeah. In the hotel, you can't unless you get an Airbnb. You can't get a hotel that's less than like twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, it's a hard pass. Yeah, I mean, our hotel. We're going to Paramorphicon next year, and we found a uh, an Airbnb already. That's probably a, what a half of what you would spend on a hotel, mm-hmm. and everybody has a bed. Yeah. yeah, I'm 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 glad at the time, you know, I when I participated, you know, for example, you know, I know it doesn't show up well on a podcast, but I'm, you know, six, eight, 260 pounds. Uh, so I always sort of get relegated to some of those celebrity security roles. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, one year we were escorting, uh, you know, the great Stan Lee mm-hmm. from a panel he, he was doing back to the green room. And to get there, you had to go through the the sea of nerddom. And he kind of gestured, and I leaned down. I said, "Yes, sir." And he's like, well, "Keith, walk next to me." And I thought it was a great honor until mm-hmm. he started to explain that 
the way they used to draw Spider-Man and other books and with perspective, the eye always goes to the tallest point. So mm. by the time somebody realized Stan Lee was walking by them, we would already be past. And so he was basically, mm. you know, just using me as his as his geek shield. Uh, so I wasn't sure if I was complimented or dissed by Stan Lee, but but either way, it's one of the best moments of my life. I'm going to say it was a compliment because you can now say that you were used by Stan Lee. I was. I was. That, that's and, an honor. And not to be disparaging, but Stan Lee also used Jack Kirby, Steve <laughs> Ditko. I, I mean, am in great company. Yeah, I mean, if you want to spin it that way, I'll, I'll allow it. But yeah, I also you know, got to you know work you know a panel with Bruce Tim when he released mm-hmm. the the Green Lantern uh, mm-hmm. animated most recent anime Green Lantern. Uh, I remember they were screening something with uh, Frankie Muniz uh, called pizza boy, which also had rowdy, rowdy Piper mm-hmm. and, Legend. and thing. And, 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 you know, Frankie, Muniz, Nightdale, North Carolina, uh, graduated mm-hmm. from Nightdale high school where I live here in Nightdale. Um, and so I've had the great honor in town and where he lives now in Phoenix in the Phoenix airport. And I don't think he remembered me, but he pretended to. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, He's also uh, pretty big in the producer game now too. So he's he sees a million people. It's not even funny, I'm sure. That's but fair. I mean, you're you're hard to miss, as you said. You're six foot eight, and now with the, uh, you know, with the um, haggard beard. Yeah, I was yeah. I was looking for uh, an adjective that would uh, you know, like the uh, a beard that rivals that of a um, I don't know. Uh, you're all uh, wizard Harry. I still haven't seen him. How have you not? Wait, what? My mom tries to force him down my throat, and I'm like, you know what, mom? You're into Doctor Who. You can keep that. You're into Harry Potter. Eh. But the kiddo likes it, so I kind of should get on board here, probably before fate. Harry Potter was like that was. It came out Harry, when I was super young, and like my dad would take me to the theaters to see it. So that's like it has a oh. special place in my heart. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was very anti Potter because I'm a I'm a Tolkien nerd through and Mm -hmm. through and anything else kind of would never live up to that for me. But, you know, then I had two daughters and so now I'm a Hufflepuff through and through. (laughs) Kristen's in the twilight. What? (laughs) No. Isn't isn't that, isn't that guy the new Batman? Yeah, somehow. So that's, I mean, you're jumping on board early there, I guess. He's really not. Uh, Kristen's in the Power Rangers. As you can tell by my wall. What a loser. Oh, and my tattoos. I wasn't sure if he was, I wasn't sure if he just liked the sparkle and the fact and tried to brood. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's what that leather jacket was about. Maybe that was a brooding jacket. <laughs> <laughs> to keep them dry and when they play baseball in the rain. <laughs> it does. But speaking <laughs> speaking of tattoos, um, from what I read, they'll be live tattooing at Fayetteville? Absolutely. So American Tattoo Society will be there with uh, six or eight tattoo artists. Uh, if you go on our Facebook page or Instagram, we occasionally post some of the previous art they've done. Uh, these guys are absolutely amazing uh, with with some of the ink that they that they do. So there's, uh, you know, live tattooing. It's it's always it's in a small room off the side of the convention floor. So you're not going to feel self-conscious about being you know out in front of a whole bunch of people if, if you're if you're looking for some ink. But but absolutely. I might actually what? get a tattoo while we're there. Um, since Tracy's there, I was already planning on filling up this arm with helmets. Might get a, a yellow Space Ranger helmet on here. That'd be awesome. And uh, it's, I mean, as you guys know, uh, and I've met her, uh, you know, a couple times at other cons, but she is uh, one of the nicest people there is. I mean, love being uh, Tracy Lynn Cruz. Uh, she and Michael. Uh, you know, but especially are just amazing with guests. Uh, you know, I, I hate a con where where the invited guests are standoffish or not engaged. And you know, these these two and 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 our future Power Rangers, we always look for people who are uh, just extremely welcoming and and engaging with you know age eight to eighty. You know, we want everybody to come and have a good time and and. She especially is just getting such great uh, reception on on our show as as a guest. Yeah, if you check out her Instagram, like it's nothing but her interacting with fans. I checked out her Instagram story today. It was her braiding a young girl's hair, 
And I was like, oh, I've never seen like any other celebrity do that to anybody, you know? Mm -mm. That's, yeah, it's normally a don't. I'll sign something, I'll shake your hand, I'll take a picture with the hover hand, and that's when you touch someone's hair, then you're getting, well, you're opening yourself up for a whole bunch of who knows. Absolutely, and, and uh, if Michael Copon touches some young fangirl's hair, that's where we start needing <laughs> that's you know, where we oxygen. Go. All right. People think because if you want to go there, Michael Copon has a following of you know between his One Tree Hill stuff and his Power Ranger stuff. I mean, young women love that man. Mm-hmm. Old women love that man. I mean, so I can understand why. I mean, not even trying to sound weird, he is an attractive man. I could care less. He has donuts. They, well, that's what that, we that's, that's what that's we care of, about. That's one oh, type of oh, attractive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's true too. Those donuts are going to be attractive to me tomorrow. I'll I'll, I'll send y'all both a picture of the donuts. Okay. I, gotcha. uh, I want to circle back to the tattoos real quick. Um, as, as we all know, you have to be eighteen or have uh, express parental consent. Uh. uh I'm, I'm going to assume that that continues because that's the law. Absolutely. Yes. Um, is there a way to sign up ahead of time for a tattoo from any of these fellows or are they doing it all like a commission at a convention? First come, first serve, first five in the door, you know, stuff like that. It is. It is. It's first come, first serve. It's like a uh, commission. You have an opportunity to go and meet with the uh, you know shop owner of, of American Tattoo Society and you know, just a, a you know, great guy, but also speak and look through some individual tattoo artist portfolios. Um, it always helps obviously to come with ideas. So if you do have an idea for a tattoo, you could bring some, you know, art or have it available on your phone or, or whatever. But, uh, one of the great things about them is that they'll stay even after we close the con to guests, if you're still working, they'll get through their backlog. So it's, it's, a. am not, I, I can't remember a time in the last couple of years that anybody has been turned away and has not been accommodated. Cause like I said, we bring, uh, the, the, they're bringing more than just one artist. They're, you know, typically six or eight artists. And they're not free. I, I know the answer, but they're not free. They are charged per. They, they, they are typical, whatever their typical, typical mm-hmm. rates are. But, uh, a lot of people coming in from, from town who want to have from out of town, they want to have the convention experience and, uh, knock out a tattoo while they're there. It's always seemed to be a, a great addition to our offerings. Yeah, it's not like face paint, where that's usually free. This is body art, and this is and this is permanent, permanent, permanent yes. art. Just now, like my Iron Man popsicle stick tattoo, it is permanent. See, I was still wondering what the hell that was. Now that you say it, I see it. But I was like, I saw it on the back of your leg. I'm like, what the hell is that? It was the first one. That one was free. I got it from a radio station. I'll, if you want to hear the full story. Come see me at our table. That's fair. That's how you get but, them in. That's that's marketing. That is I, right there. I got a question about the tattoo. If I end up getting a tattoo, would I be able to record the video for my YouTube channel? Absolutely, upon the discretion of that artist. I mean, with their with their permission. That's yes. fair. Always ask permission because you are using well because well as you know, Christian. Maybe you don't know because you're not into sports ball. Uh, Basketball players have to get a sign off now on their tattoos from their tattooist to use in in their video games. I actually did know that because Randy Orton's tattoo artist has sued the WWE or 2K because they used mm. his tattoos in video games. Wow. So always ask. If you have a question about something, especially with artwork, ask. Don't take pictures of people's artwork. Um even if they're and giving both away Mike and I have free. law degrees, so if you need us to rip up a quick little contract, be more than happy to. Um, I've looked into being a notary, but I'm not, so sorry, I can't stamp it. Um, there's also a gaming alley with VR games, uh, I'm assuming the headset, uh, as well as arcade cabinet and table games. Um, so Tokyo Retro Gaming, and who's right there in downtown Fayetteville, and they have a VR uh, shop as well as a, a really great anime shop on, on the second floor. We'll be providing some of our VR gaming opportunities. Uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it's not Boxcar. It's one of the other guys there. I, sorry, I'm blanking his name. is going to bring uh, some cabinets, and I think he may actually be bringing a – I think there's a Power Rangers pinball that I asked oh, nice. at the source – 
I don't know if it's happening, but he has some pinball and, you know, uh, stand up style arcade games, as well as we have uh, Gamers Guild running our Yu Gi Oh! Magic, Pokemon, uh, our uh, games. And I think we're also running some D&D campaigns while we're there, as well as some other stuff. So, yes, definitely great for uh, VR. gaming i think there's also some other uh nintendo switch type tournaments um but again gamers guild the tokyo retro gaming run all that for us so we basically give them free reign to do whatever they need to do hmm. that gives me an idea i might have to uh hmm. christian we're gonna uh, that gives me an idea we might have to chit chat about something no uh, yeah because i was gonna ask if we could like maybe bring the board game that uh, I forgot that what too. studio released it, but it's a Power Rangers, like, basically Dungeons and Dragons game. It's called Heroes of the Grid. And, I mean, if it's okay with you, Keith, I would love to bring that down and let people play it. Absolutely. We'll have air- we have uh, round tables over in that area that we specifically just stack some games for. And we've had some people come in the past to do some test marketing on game designs that, you know, they have. Uh I don't know why my mind just went to uh, Parks and Recreation and whatever that game Ben invented, the cones of something. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's it's that, that same type of feel. I mean, you know, like I said, if it's geek, we've got it. People come, you know, bring a deck of Uno cards, sit around the table and, you know. I have the Power about Rangers Uno card Power game. Power. So. You have the what Sam- now? Power Rangers Uno cards. Is that a real samurai. thing? Yeah. It's Uno with Samurai. Oh. with. You know, Shinkenger. Okay. Ooh. The more you know. My, mom, my, my mommy got it for me for Christmas. <laughs> so as you, that, as, you, as you mentioned earlier, though, we do uh, we do have a face painter. We do have a caricature artist um, <laughs> over in that area, as, as well as a whole lot of uh, cosplay-focused uh, stuff. I mentioned the cosplay lip sync earlier. We're going to expand that to two days with a junior division on Saturday and a senior division on Sunday uh, to align with our cosplay contests of uh, Saturday and Sunday, junior division, senior division. I mean, that's going to be one of the most interesting things. Cause like you said, seeing Darth Vader sing like that's, I'm just, I'm just curious what characters we're going to sing in the cosplay lip sync battle. Uh, I mean, I don't remember. I'd have to go back to the video to see what song he did, but we had pickle Rick doing <laughs> a song last year. My two daughters and a bunch of their friends did a witches of uh, Waverly place uh, performance. We had this guy, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was dressed as Steven. You remember, but he did uh, "Single Ladies" by Beyonce. <laughs> it was off the hook. Uh, and you know, between you and me and the wall, you know, people have asked about uh, cosplay karaoke, and and I, I don't want that. I, I don't want to. Mm. I, I don't want to hear bad singing performances. Uh, but like I said, everything is better in costume. So everything from little kids singing a Disney princess song to, I don't know, a 10 year old dressed as Iron Man singing Iron Man. It's awesome. Or sing, seeing Lou Ferrigno lip sync um, that four non blonde song. <laughs> I Christian, want, that was I'd a band wanted... from the early 90s. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I was born in 95. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'll I'll send you the YouTube link Thank you. later. Son? <laughs> see see in my day, Christian, what we Sorry. would do is we would make a make we would give someone a hand someone a cassette tape. I know what a cassette And say, listen is. to this. Yeah, cassette. <sighs> um I mean so, who wouldn't want to go after hearing all that? In my childhood. <laughs> real is that a real real? Yes, yep. yes it is. Yes it is. Thank we you. We were just talking about that last night actually. Oh, the, the real? Yeah, we were talking about logos for... Um, oh, he's back, Christian. Yeah, the... the... My, uh, my, co- my co-host, my other co-host, my cat. He's like, what the hell? I want to get on your desk. Yeah, that's no bueno. Yeah. If, he jumps was... up there, if he jumps up there and vomits out the Tesseract, that would be awesome. Wrong color, but yeah. Uh, that would be interesting. He wears a bow tie. Hey, buddy. All right. Uh, so, so beyond that, I mean, is there any other uh, attraction that we've missed? That, uh, that so, taking place? yeah, we I missed. Mean, we we do we do have some. Like I said, we have uh, 
uh, Michael Kosky and Gregory French and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, W.H. Bell, who are all in The Walking Dead. Um, their panel is actually going to be run by Mick Grimes, who's a cosplayer that looks exactly like Rick Grimes. It's very uh, close, yeah. Who's coming. And, you know, it's just, it's just awesome. Uh, so the walkers are always fun. I remember two years ago, I think I did uh, the panel was uh, tequila shots with the walking dead, um, which was an oh, awesome, boy. awesome way. To- you know, some of the best vendors in the area, we, will and always will be a comic con a comic book convention so you know we really focus on making sure that we have some of the best dealers uh local for you know gold and silver bronze and and modern comics uh comic book creators but we also have a lot of other great you know movie posters transformers toys uh vintage toys new toys i found a uh ninja turtle villain that a buddy of mine was looking for for like 10 years uh, last year, just randomly, we have, you know, uh, vintage video games, everything from, you know, the Atari 2600 platform. I'm still looking for Pitfall 2, uh, the second Pitfall uh, to play. I have a, a setup over here that has my uh, Atari 2600, Sega Genesis, uh, Intellivision, ColecoVision, all that's back here in the in the back, which is why I never get real work done. Um <laughs> But again, yeah. we, we have geek speed dating, uh, and actually we have at least one wedding that has been a result of a couple that has met at our uh, geek speed dating event at, at the con. Uh, Sorry, ladies. I'm off the market, and so is Michael Copan. But I'm on the market. He is, and he's desperate. Look I'm at not him. desperate. He's a ginger. He's pretty desperate. Wow. I hate you. Wow. That that's um, that shot's fired. But no, I, I you're actually up, remember where you're staying. So I forgot to mention Saturday night. There's actually a fourth option that Ooh. starts before our con ends. About 200 feet away is the opening night of the Fayetteville Marksman hockey team. Uh, this year, Sergeant Slaughter will be dropping the inaugural puck. That's very interesting. That's nice. So, so if you're not into going to one of the after parties, but want to go see a, a hockey game, that's Saturday night. So we're we're really trying to have a a great full uh, weekend of of awesome geek entertainment. And it's not just contained within the hours of the convention either, which is which is really nice. I mean, you go to New York Comic Con, you have the city. That's your experience. It's also your backdrop for comic books and and movies and TV shows. But it's not an experience. Well, New York is an experience, but it's not that kind. It's not a communal experience. You're in your own little pocket world. This is more of a everybody. It's almost like a migration from one place to another or another or another. And there's so many options. I think we're going to have a a hell of a time, Christian and I. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out what we want to do after Saturday night. I mean, or after Saturday, after the convention, where we want to go. But. I'm sure wherever we go, it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, you got the roving and, party yeah. machine with you. Yeah. And some of the best, some of the best things uh, <laughs> for me are when people tell me that they live in Pennsylvania and they're going to come to Fayetteville mm-hmm. and bypassing Baltimore, which is a big convention that weekend. Uh, uh, we have at least two guests flying from Los Angeles, or I'm sorry, two attendees. You know, I, they're all our fans and guests, but you know, they're flying from Los Angeles for this event and they've come every year for three years over going to a Denver or a Chicago or a Baltimore. And it's really that they've been so happy with the interactivity, the family friendly atmosphere and the accessibility of our guests. Will you point them out to me? I will. I would like to talk to them happily. Yep. And honestly, I feel like the reason that is is because this convention is more personable than any convention I've ever attended. And I really like that experience. And I know that a lot of people like that experience. Well, there's this thing, such a thing as Southern hospitality and uh, taking your time, doing it right, being polite. You know, it does extend to not just your verbal interactions with people. It extends to 
it's what I would want to do too here, you know, go to a convention like this because it is close and local. And we're not just saying it because we got a free table, but you know, it, it's, it's a fun place to go. There's fun people to see, you know, we got to talk to uh, Christian. I met last year, as I said, in front of Christopher Kamen Lee, Andros's table. We both hung, went over and talked to Kerrigan Mahan, you Christian and Keith a little bit more than I did. Um, but I've seen the footage and it's absolutely hilarious. Yeah, oh, I the, actually the, still the have the Kerrigan drinking footage. Yes, I still good. have that. And you and him talking about uh, whiskey have that. Well, I think I have here. Let me see if I can grab it without taking my mic. Oh, let's see. There's my don't go Bill O'Reilly on you. There's my Kerrigan. But nice. on the back of that is uh, Barbara Goodson, Rita Repulsa. Oh, oh nice. We had had in the past and uh will have again in the future. She's a big uh fan of her comma. She's just dates haven't worked the last two years. But uh I remember uh I'll just tell you a quick story. Uh two years ago nope, three years ago, first year, uh second year of the con, first year I was involved walking to a sushi place with Barbara and Kerrigan. And then we got back to the hotel and Kerrigan was geeking out with some guy. And somehow we ended up walking away with a bottle of Patron because, <laughs> because he was Goldar. So mm-hmm. Jesus, that sounds like a fun night though. It was, it was, it was a very good night. Um, and uh, I just thought of it. I got it last year for something. Uh, I have two signed uh, Kerrigan, uh, Muddy Morphin Power Rangers books, comic books with the Goldar variant. So I'm going to find something uh, to that's going to be a giveaway at our table. I don't know what yet, but uh, or, stop by. Or, see if, or if you're if interested, it. we also have a auction for the uh, Cumberland County uh, Humane Society, uh, you know, uh, FAPS for Animal Rescue. We do on the second day, we do a, uh, a charity event as well. Um, a lot of people bring stuff for that. Uh, so again, we we really do try to give back to the the community. A couple of years ago, we did a big fundraiser for hurricane victims from uh, from the you know some serious flooding. So you know it's uh, when you have a fan run con, it's you're able to do a lot of really great things. Mm-hmm. No, not as many wheels to grease. Yeah. yeah. Another um, another interesting thing I wanted to say was I've never seen a convention before with a bar inside it. I don't know y'all might have, but that was the this is really the first one. We Chris was like, "Yeah, we're gonna go to the bar." I'm like, "Where?" And he's like, "Right down here." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> okay." And and did you say to Chris right after that? So then, why did you come in two hours late today? <laughs> <laughs> That's just how. So it goes. so that is that is one of the benefits of being in a in a venue like the the Crown Coliseum. Uh, you know, Fayetteville is a substantially large city with Fort Bragg. It's it's a thing, but the uh, Crown Expo Center is a is a great place, uh, extremely accessible, free parking. Uh, you know, you can park the door in 30 seconds mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, typical city conventions where you have, you know, parking decks and 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 other things. So that's always been a great uh, draw um, for us producing the, the convention. There is the facility itself. And because of the uh arena and the hockey team you know we do have the ability to take advantage of things like the bar uh yeah when we did our panel uh our trivia panel at um raleigh uh and thank you for those tickets that uh that person will be in attendance christian let's see if we can find him because i forget who it was um but uh, you know we told everybody about it and they're like oh there's one in fadeville and they'll be there and i said hey if you're here you get free parking I mean, they were going to get it anyway, but it, it Just, struck a lot of people as interesting as, oh, free, free parking, parking, huh? We've yeah. learned to make that part of our pitch because it is, I mean, even if it's $7 or $12 or $20, that's significant money you could be spending inside the convention with one of our great artists or vendors or or, or guests. So it's just it's just really cool. And so, yeah, that's part of the facility fees. So we we eat that as promoters as part of your ticket price. Well, and, and speaking to that, you mentioned ten, fifteen, twenty dollars for parking at a any other convention. Uh, 
what are ticket prices? So if you buy tickets directly at one of our uh, ticket outlets, which is either you know, Dragon's Lair in Fayetteville or Hobby Town or uh, Comic World in Zebulon, uh, ticket prices for one-day tickets are fifteen dollars. Two-day tickets, weekend pass, twenty-five dollars. So uh, it's an extremely affordable convention, and all that is is pretty much put directly back into the con to cover uh, those service fees. Our you know facility rental contract and the ability to fly guests from London, Los Angeles. Uh, you know, not everybody. Uh, is as accommodating as, say, a Larry Hama who likes to take the train uh, Mm -hmm. and sketch on the way down or a Gary Cohen of uh, Blue Devil fame who's going to, you know, if the weather's nice, ride his motorcycle from Richmond. You know, um, it does take a little bit of of capital to to put on a great show like this. Mm -hmm. But we try to maintain and keep those costs low so they are affordable for people to come. And like like you guys have alluded to, we talked about it being extremely interactive. You know, if you, I don't know, if you pack a lunch or bring water, you don't have to spend another dime, but you still get a great experience for two days. Mm-hmm. Uh, or is it just single day passes that are left? Uh, no, there's still weekend passes available, single day and weekend passes available. Okay. And um, uh, coincidentally, um, we have a pair to give away. Uh, Christian, how are they going to do that? How are they going to win the, that free pair? All you got to do in the comment section below is let us know who you're most excited to meet at Fayetteville. It's me, by the way. That's the right answer. If you answer Sean, I will block <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, but the, then they can follow me instead of you. So do, you, do your fans have a Sean or Christian? Do they have a, a certain name? Like, you know, Are they the, the Fritzies? No, or, no. Or, or the, I like that. Or I like that one. You know, yeah. What, what? So, so for that Power Rangers guy over there, it's the Power Rangers guy. Yeah. So, uh, and and I will probably wear one of the shirts because our logo guy is still. He hasn't got me a new logo yet. Um. So for him, uh, his is Ranger Club, and um. You know, like Bullet for, Club, but Ranger Club. You know. Eh. Play and uh, so because of the, the podcast, uh, we met a year into me doing well, a year into us both doing this. So we married our, our interests at Fayetteville. Um, so effectively, a marriage of business already happened at Fayetteville. Um, <laughs> but uh, business relationship. Um, That's you, LLC. Not, not that far. Okay. You know, we're unofficial. I'm spitting a handshake. If, uh, if we're married, can you get me a ring? Shut up. Um, I'll, pr- I'll 3D print you one. Um, but uh, uh, Lots of so, jewelry available at Con. But uh, I, I'm, Christian, I'm, Christian, I got another idea. Thank you for reminding me, Keith. Um, uh, um, I wrote that down too. Um, Power Rangers in cyberspace, so the audio listeners are cyber scholars because it sounds alliterative, but grammatically it's not. So Ranger Club, cyber scholars. They kind of intermix. Coincide. So, yes. Short answer, yes. But Sean went with the long answer. Always. And then I summarize it. Like you should do with an email when you forward it. So, I know that you we talked about a little bit pre-show uh, that we also have a uh, photographer who's going to be Mm-hmm. Uh, co-resident with you guys over there, Allie Mae Weber, who's a, a huge Power Rangers uh, fan. I believe both of you have met her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she will have a green screen there and be able to, you know, take pictures and, you know, put you in front of any scene you want. She's going to have, you know, obviously sort of a, because we're Halloween, a horror background. But, you know, I was just with her in Florence and, you know, she did a great backdrop for a kid dressed as Jack Frost. Uh, for a lady dressed as the uh, the uh, Queen of Hearts from uh, Wizard of Oz, just nice, real quick, real opportunity for you to catch a great memory from the con, um, especially pictures with uh, Michael Copan or, or Tracy Lynn Cruz or you guys, as photogenic as you are, um, especially with that great leather jacket. Wow! And the leather jacket will be there too, much to Sean's dismay. I have a mannequin that we can gladly, you know, display it, and you know. 
As long as I can put the scarf on there with it. Oh, Christian, if we have a mannequin, we got to put a morpher on the wrist. <laughs> Which morpher, though? We got time force and in space. You um, change it throughout the day. And, yeah, and we have the SPD one, and I have the belt buckle. Um, money morpher. Well, I was just going to go with in space and time force because Copan and Tracy. I got I got straps for everything now, so <laughs> for morphers. For adult sized wrist straps for morphers. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. And to, to and to hang you upside down from the ceiling. That probably what will happen at Fayetteville. So if you want to see that, make sure to be there. Well, we do have the aerialists. And a couple uh, two years ago I did go upside down with Lou Ferregno and Sam Jones, so there's a oh possibility goodness. of a lot of things. Anything's possible. Absolutely. Maybe I know. I know. Uh, it said on the website that there there will be comedy as well. Maybe Sean can uh, perform some stand ups, considering that's all he ever watches and listens to. Dude, I've done stand up before. Oh, so, so well, all we, right then. We have a we have a great local comedian, Tyler Wood, who's actually going to be moderating the Josh Herdman panel, um, as well as a, as a couple of things. He's also putting together a great panel for us on the history of Hanna Barbera. Oh, nice. Uh, yep. And then we have a comedy troupe opening Sunday called, uh, mm, I know it's a funny pun and I'm trying to remember, uh, horrors ass or something. I don't know. It's, uh, off the, the whores remember their war. name. Mm, no, no horrors divorce. It's, it's, it's definitely a, uh, a, a punny thing, but you know, good, local comedy troupe who's going to be performing we also have a nerd slam a nerd trivia contest mm -hmm. happening preliminaries on saturday and the finals on sunday and i assume the trivia will be for prizes absolutely uh for nerd slam it will be as, and then a lot of our just trivia and door prizes happen for for prizes just throughout the day anything from you know pops to ray guns you know we've anything and everything we give and pride ourselves on having more uh door prizes and trivia prizes than any other con i've ever been to yeah that's one thing i did notice last year i was like wow they give away a lot of stuff mm -hmm. uh, we're a, we're a, we want people to have a great experience so a lot of our vendors are, are just very giving uh they you know not only uh, come and have a booth and, and have to make, you know, obviously they're living doing that if that's what they do, but they've always been very charitable in, in making sure that we have door prizes and uh, auction, fundraising auction uh, items for our show. I got this My Hero Academia thing back here. That's Shut up. <laughs> that's mine. So, so wait, let, let's summarize it. We have, we have great guests for Fayetteville, great My vendors, great... Uh, great events i mean Sorry. just the whole convention Sorry. itself is going to be great i've i've uh you know over the last you know i'm 48 you know i went to my first uh i think dungeons and dragons con or a star trek con when i was you know 11 13 i've been going to things ever since i've been to the big ones uh, i've been to the library small cons we are a great mid-size con eight to ten thousand people uh, which makes us the third largest in, in north carolina i think the most interactive one in the southeast um but i i came on with michael chodery to you know the founder of faithful comic con to keep putting this one on because it was an awesome experience the first year i came just as a volunteer uh to help him you know just run the show floor uh, it has been an amazing, amazing partnership. Yeah, we haven't yep. worked with Mike a whole lot, but, um, you know, from just from our brief interactions with him, I mean, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. He's passionate about it. He, he's always got a box of old 60s comic books. So yep. he clearly likes, you know. Yep. At, at Michael, used to, Michael used to do uh, baseball card shows back oh, in the boy. 80s, 90s. He actually founded a, a Comic-Con in Lumberton and, and passed it off to to a, a friend of his who runs that Lumberton show every year. Um, but but like I said, it's it's just a great fan and family run experience. 
You know, tomorrow, for example, I'm going to uh, be with the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. Never had that opportunity to go talk to a, a minor league team about some partnership. And then I'm going to uh, uh, our opening with the, a professor from Fayetteville State University uh, to talk about getting Fayetteville State more involved. Um, and in the middle, I get to drop by one of the best comic book stores in the country, Dragon's Lair. I still have to check that place out. Awesome the expansion and everything. It's awesome. And uh, I don't know if I can use this as a, as a quick segue. The the owner of, of Dragon's Lair, Bernie, um, who is just in a Faces of Fayetteville feature, he's going to be one of the celebrity guests at the Beard uh, contest that Saturday night. They're doing a panel Saturday talking about the uh, comic books as a commodity, uh, explaining to people what a signature on a cover means, what a CGC you know graded uh you know encapsulated comic means what pressing means what what all that means for people who look at comic books as as an investment um and who better than a than a shop owner and and somebody who a uh, cgc uh, signature authentication and and uh uh grading uh liaison um but he's a rocker I mean, he's a, a heavy metal rock guy through and through. He was in some great Fayetteville bands, and he's really excited about our spring show, which we are at Comic-Con. We'll have a spring show, April 25th and 26th, the same weekend as the Dogwood Festival. But we have a amazing uh, lineup, and we're, we're going to be exploring comics and hip-hop comics. Um, and we're talking with uh, great hip hop legends, Marley Marl, Roxanne Chante, uh, Big Daddy Kane. Oh. Talking, uh, <laughs> well, Big, Big Daddy hey. Kane lives in Wake Forest. I'm going to I'm going to quote Tom yeah. Segura here. If you don't know who Big Daddy Kane is, you can go fuck yourself. There you go. There you go. <laughs> he lives in Wake Forest. He does. He does. For the last uh, 13, 14 years, he just performed Saturday with Run DMC at this uh, uh, festival in um, Durham. Uh, but you know, I had the great opportunity to work with DMC at a North Carolina comic con and a I, lot of the same. And there's such a great, uh, tie in between hip hop and comics. If you watch any of the documentaries now, if you watch the, 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 uh, the short series, the get down, or if you watch the Wu Tang documentary or evolution of hip hop, every single one of those at some point cuts to comic style graffiti art somewhere in that thing so uh you know that tie is just is just really really interesting uh to me and i want to i wanted the opportunity to explore that so we're going to focus a little bit of that in our spring show uh hip-hop and comics rock and roll and comics everything from you know the story of kiss uh members uh you know paul stanley gene simmons you know mm -hmm. putting their blood in the ink for the comic mm -hmm. that they created uh Mm. A lot of those. So I think there's a there's a definite tie in as well as I like to explore the the culture between skateboarding and comic art. There's a lot of skateboard decks that have, yeah. you know, Dragon Ball Z and Rick and Morty art. And, and my and hero other... academia has a skateboard that was, I think, a Comic-Con exclusive. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, you know, there's you know, like I said, if it's geek, we've got it. But I'd like to bring in people from different geek dums. And, and put them all in one big space and, and just see what happens. It's a melting pot. No Absolutely. different than any other convention. No different than any other culturally um, uh, culturally um, influencing medium, like comics, which are now movies, which are everybody goes to the movies. And, and one thing that a lot of cons just, I'm not saying they've got away from, but they've, they haven't explored the art as much as, as, I like, mm -hmm. and you know, those old, uh, record covers, vinyl record covers are, you know, kind of went into, if you were an artist for those, you didn't have anything for a while cause CDs didn't quite have the same impact, but then beer labels, mm. uh, you know, kind of became that. So I'd love to find artists that do comic books and vinyl and beer labels. And one of the artists I'm really looking forward to, hopefully she can make it in, uh, April is Afua Richardson, who did a lot of those hip-hop uh, cover variants for Marvel titles, uh, a great mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg variant on an Iron Fist comic. I don't know if you remember those from a couple years ago, but they're just awesome. Mm -hmm. And and I, yeah. I love that art. They were, um, 
They were interesting. Uh, the concept was interesting. The execution was really well done. Um, you know who would be really cool would be, um, uh, and he's probably not attainable, um, or at least it would drive the price of the tickets up, would be Ed Pisker with his hip-hop well, family tree. I just reached out to Ed Pisker about oh, nice. hip-hop family tree earlier tonight. I sent him a, a follow-up email. Nice. Uh, and would love, would love, love to bring him in. And I, I, I'm pretty sure he's an affordable Okay. Yes, and, and for that, I don't. I mean, it, especially for the spring, it, we're we're not looking at any ticket price increase for the spring. We've already talked about it with the crown, awesome. made sure that they're not going to increase their costs that they pass through to us. So, uh, I would absolutely love Ed Pisker to be part mm-hmm. of of this show. The Hip Hop Family Tree is an epic uh, production. Well, and and I mean, even just you know veering off of that X Men Grand Design, summarizing, geez. All that too. I mean, that would be. I just, I just love to listen to him talk. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, so from comic creators, the old school uh, hip hop heads. Uh, you may not know this about our DJ, uh, DJ Clash Queensbridge. He actually was a producer for uh, LL Cool J on the Mama Said Knock You Out. He worked hmm. back in the old Queens days with Marley Marl, Grandmaster Flash. Uh, hmm. He knew uh, African Mabata. He knew uh, you know, all those guys coming out of the, the Queens, the Bronx, and the Brooklyn scene uh, when the New York style hip hop really started to, to, to jump. Um, but I'd love to bring. PD Pablo, uh, you know, North Carolina, come on and raise up, mm-hmm. take your shirt off, twirl around your head, just like a helicopter. I'd love to bring him in without, uh, uh Orlando Jones, who I met a couple of years mm-hmm. ago, uh, who was in drum line with him. Yep. You know, those little connections, uh, PD. Pablo. Yeah. I'm not far from that new burn Raleigh Boulevard crossing. I Pass every time I take my kids to school. So, <laughs> you know, I would love Petey Pablo. And, and are we going to get a, a J. Cole? Uh, I'd love for him to stop by. You know, we can't afford to drop, you know, 50K for an appearance fee. Yeah. But, you know, we are a local show uh, targeted to families, targeted to military families. So, you know, we try to leverage that as best we can to get uh, get people to be interested in our con. Here, here's, here's, a good new, here's good news, though. Christian and I, we're free. <laughs> Uh, absolutely and thank you for that uh but i would also love to see some uh cosplay karaoke of of power rangers you know in in full gear doing ice ice baby or something of the sort we're well funny story uh uh, christian ordered a phantom ranger outfit it'll get here he ordered from anarchy so it'll be here in 2024 and they said um, march like, yeah, right. I know. Uh, and I'd have actually blown out a system doing Ice Ice Baby at a wedding karaoke party. Well, there you go. Because nobody here, my friend Sean, is going to tell you to stop. Well, the DJ might because he's got to reboot all the equipment. You're supposed to collaborate and listen. <laughs> yes, that's true. I'll definitely get that on video, though. It's welcomed. I'll even send it to work. That no, you won't. Amazing. I'll share that with work. That's no, you that. won't. Now, can you do it super fast? Uh, I can do the um, the the Cypress Hill in, uh, styled one, the '94 album that flopped. Um, hard Mind to swallow. Blowing. Hard to swallow. Mind blowing came after that was '98. '94 was hard to swallow. Well, okay. That's where they called it too gold. Yes. Too cold. Too yeah. Cold. Too cold. Yeah, he had the um, dreadlocks in '98. Which was okay, more so Cypress Hill inspired, but yes. So I'll give you, I'll give you Ice Ice Baby. I'll pull in some, uh, some Mix-a-Lot's Baby Got Back. Um, That's Christian. We'll, That's Christian. We'll, we'll, oh well, then we're gonna have to. Then I'm gonna have to do uh, M and M's without me, and we'll do that at the VFD, VFW Post Six Seventy after party on the nineteenth. I mean, I can't argue with that. Sounds like fun to me. Featuring leftover donuts from Michael Copan. <laughs> Probably yes. <laughs> Now I'm really looking forward to those donuts tomorrow, man. Dude, I'm looking forward to the convention. Screw the donuts. No, I mean, they'll be there, but... Hey, man, I one step at a time. Cocoa Pond, somebody dressed as Homer Simpson and both of them going, donuts. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't have that without having a, uh, a Ned Flanders devil. That would be very good, very good. Christian, the, uh, next year. 
Okay. I'll show you the episode. It's where Homer's head got turned into a donut. Okay. I believe you. Oh my God, he's so ginger. He's so ginger. took good. off his hat and I saw it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's bad. Yeah, it is. That's why I I'm, wear a hat all the time. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to put you up with Goyle and call you a Weasley. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. I, I, That's I, high praise. That's high praise. I, I could do I could do a British accent. Not well, but I can do one. Don't. Wow, Don't. Sean, thanks. Don't. You live in Virginia. So what, you want me to have a southern accent? We'll talk about this later. <laughs> when you're when you're older. 23. I know. Anyway, so Fayetteville, again, recap. Saturday, October 19, Sunday, October 20. Get your tickets. $15 Saturday, 25 Sunday. Did I get that right? Or the pair for how much? It is if you if you go if you it's $25 for the weekend pass. Mm. So it's $15 either Saturday or on Sunday. Mm. One day passes. Uh same price, 25 for the weekend. If you get those either at the door or at you know a couple dollar fees, but you know that's that's not us. So we apologize for that, but we do try to make sure that uh, uh, that tickets are available for for everybody as quickly as possible. So, uh, go ahead. No, so so go there. Tracy Lynn Cruz, Michael Copan. Those are our main attractions. Um, I'm going to have at some point a sit down with Arn Anderson and Sergeant Slaughter in some capacity, uh, be it at the table for later release, or I'd love to. We'll have to talk more about panels. Uh, Butterbean's going to be there as well. We didn't mention him at all, uh, but he'll be in that group as well with us. Um, Butterbean makes pens, handmade pens, like hmm. nice wooden carved uh, professional ink pens as a as a hobby. It's it's they're quite awesome. If you go to his Facebook page, uh, you can see some of them there. Well, that's I might have to we we might have to talk shop wood shop. That is, um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did you like that? Uh, we also we, we all just going through some cards. We also have a geek church with Hector Murray, Hector of uh, Faith and Fandom. Uh, you, you may know I have some of his publications. Uh, just a really really cool guy. He's a forty under forty for Cumberland County. Uh, lives in Lumberton and will be performing a uh, just a good Sunday morning uh, or Sunday afternoon at twelve thirty church service for us. Something you don't see a typical convention. Interesting. Oh. Uh, it typically, typically not, but Hector's a, a fan of the con and, and a friend of our con and, and a mm -hmm. published uh, published author. They've just really good with uh, um, they do a, a poll podcast on New Comic Book Day. Uh, just just really cool guys with a good unique uh, approach to fandom. Uh, comic book guest Al Ming Milgram we talked about Troy Little. Uh, great panels with the Disney princesses, Love Live, uh, Amia, Legend of Zelda, Voltron, Legendary Defender, comedy, as well as a couple mystery panels, which I'm not going to tell you about, Ooh. which I may not have even uh, designed yet, but we try to save them for the cool stuff that happens uh, at, at the con to give that closing of the day on Saturday and closing of the day on Sunday some really cool uh, stuff, whether we film some stuff or whether we do uh, some giveaways, but just some really cool things, as well as a whole lot of charities uh, represented, uh, everything from the uh, Anime Library of North Carolina to uh, animal uh, you know, protection against animal cruelty groups, um, as well as a bunch of science fiction and fantasy authors. Uh, just It's just so full of stuff, I can't even remember everything which is why you should come which, which is why you should come and participate in the convention absolutely yes i like the way you uh but put the button on that christian you're welcome i got you it was very punctuated and forceful and well color commentaried you're like the bateman character in dodgeball he's like the guy that sits beside bob Uecker in major league Yes, I love that guy. I love how Bob Euchre used to take the top of the whiskey bottle and make a little cologne there. <laughs> just uh -huh. a little, little bit right there. Um, I mean, the uh, I don't know why I'm thinking about Victor Serrano and the uh, <laughs> Jobu, you know, 
Oh, yeah. Pedro Serrano. Pedro Serrano. That's right. Um, I, I mean, aside from just beating the drum some more with what we've already talked about, I think we've kind of covered everything, but we still want to leave a little bit of mystery for the 18th and 19th, 19th and 20th for the people that still aren't quite convinced. Come down and have a good time. You'll enjoy yourself. It's one of the I best promise. conventions I've ever been to, so you need to be there. Yeah, I, I promise it is, and I hate when people on TV make a promise to somebody because you know that person's then going to die in the next scene or the episode, and they're just going to be haunted by it. But I promise that you will enjoy it because I'll be there both days. <laughs> and if that's not reason enough, come get Fritzy. <laughs> I don't know what that is yet, but <laughs> I, I don't know. But I thought it could be a verb. Sure. That that should be your new catchphrase, Sean. No. We're gonna make it your new catchphrase. We're gonna get it on shirts. We're All gonna get it on stickers. We're gonna get I'm it on gonna... banners. <laughs> Sorry, from the desk of a geek. Oh, mine's. I have a three D printer. Uh, a box of crayons, a coloring book, some screwdrivers, and some 8-bit perler beads. I have a Power Rangers it's... helmet. You're a loser. <laughs> I think I think we can cut all this last little bit out. Yeah. No, we'll just leave. Fuck it. We'll just leave it in. And we'll yeah. just end it right here. This is shut the shit down. <laughs> we're out. I think yeah, I think we're Fayetteville Comic Con, October 19th to 20th, Fayetteville, North Carolina at the Crown Expo Center. Uh, two tickets available here for the weekend passes through Christian and Sean and the Power Rangers Guy podcast. Uh, looking forward to seeing everybody there, especially Michael Copon and Tracy Lynn Cruz and the donuts of Michael Copon, which will be previewed by Christian Ingram tomorrow when he is in Virginia Beach. Ooh. Yep. I'll be down there. I'll be right here at this desk. That's unfortunate. Anyways, um, go, because I said so. Fritz has spoken. So it is said, so it shall be. Always.